and good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Anjana Rathmayakal, and welcome to the webinar session. And today we're going to discuss how to purchase NASDAQ items within Sage application. If you talk about NASDAQ items, what are those? It could be anything. It could be either physical or non physical product that you buy and sell. And also, it could be something where you have to do purchasing sales, but you do not need to track off within your inventory control. But still, you want to do all the sales and purchases. That could be either services or maintenance or any other labor costs. So, uh, first of all, just let me know whether you can hear my voice and whether you can see my screens. What is non-stock items and how we're gonna maintain our non-stock items using inventory control module and during the transaction entries. And how to raise purchase orders for these non-stock items. And we want to book invoices for these non-stock items. And finally, we want to track whether it's gonna do any impact on our inventory control reports. Okay, let's start. If we discuss on how to manage transfer item using inventory control module, in SAGE, there is a separate module called for inventory, and that is inventory control. And if you're using inventory control, First of all, you need to set up your inventory basic data setup. In order to maintain your inventory, in order to create an item on your item master, you need to have the following details. First of all, you need to have a separate item structure. Where are you going to identify, where are you going to differentiate your inventory items based on different, different purposes? Therefore, you might have item structures in with different colors, different codes. For that, you can have different, different types of code. And as well as the next thing, you need to have categories. Actually, what this category do is it will categorize your items based on whatever the inventory control purposes. And then you need to have a separate accounting set for each item, which means whatever the transactions where these items are using, need to have accounts, need to be set up with the accounts. So whatever the transaction amounts are passing, uh, the double entries, whatever the transaction entries, whatever the account entries, these accounts. So you need to have separate accounting sets and based on your costing methods or based on your uh, any other purposes, you can have different different accounting sets. So as you can see here, I have already created a different accounting set since I want to differentiate my non-stock items from my normal stock items. So as you can see here, these are my general ledger accounts, what I have defined in my accounting set. Those are and you can see some clearing accounts also, in here. and especially have a look on these non stock clearing accounts. So, you need to set up these basic data first of all before you create any item in your item master. And let's go to item master. So, you can see there is a sub module called I see items in there you can see your item master so in the beginning i am trying to create a non stock item but i do not need to have different i do not need to have a do not need to keep it as a stock item so i'll be putting it it could be anything. So 
at the moment i'll be putting it as label so this item structure doesn't have any item structure but i'm just giving this as a different code since i want to differentiate from my other items so i'll be giving a meaningful description I'm selecting my structure code. And since I want to categorize my item into a different category, I'm just giving my I'll be giving my category. So this could be anything. And I'll be using my user specified accounting set for these numbers of value. And also in here, one thing I want you to remind if you want to have either non stock item or a stock item you need to have a separate unit of measure which means stock unit of measure so for that i have already created my unit of measures but for that i have already added a new unit of measure and i'll be adding a new unit of measure for hours since my labors are having labor rates, labor hourly rates. Therefore, I'll be having different interest measure called hours. So, I have already defined my item number with a different structure code, and I have given a different category code. I have given a different accounting set code. And in here, unit of measure. If you're creating an, any item in the system, you need to have a stock unit of measure for that. So therefore, since my labels are having hourly rates, I'll be defining it with my hours. And I will be setting it up as my default stock unit of measure for this item. And especially, this is very important option this is very important uh, functionality if you can see the stock item if i unpick the stock item system will realize that this item is a non stock item and then i'm gonna add this so once i add this you can see uh, i have created my non stock item with a different structure and it has different category and counting set, and as well as it has a different unit of measure. So I'll be saving it, and now system has created and maintaining a non stock item as labor. Then let's go for the purchasing. How we can purchase these non stock items? You can see. In the Sage Navigator, you can see there is a module called Purchase Orders. So inside the Purchase Orders, you can see there is a sub-module called Purchase Order Transactions. In this Purchase Order Transactions sub-modules, we are entering in whatever the transactions which relates to these purchases. We have requisition entry, we have purchase order entry, we have GRN entry, and we have invoice entry. In case if you want to reverse these purchase orders, we have the we, these uh, GRN entries, we have return entry, and to cancel the invoices, we have credit note entry option. So, if without using the requisition entry, I'll be directly going to purchase order entry. When you're purchasing these non stock items, you require to check and define a link. First of all, you need to have a vendor where you are purchasing these non stock items. I'll be selecting vendor. And I have given my purchase order date and I'll be putting my arrival date and I'll be setting whatever the required when the information 
purchase order date information. So I have given directly to my purchase order header. And then I'll in the line level, I'll be using my non-stop item, what I have created recently. You can see here in my item number, once I go to my site, I can see all the items what I am maintaining in my petrol mm -hmm. So, since my item, non stock item is described as label, so I'll be selecting my item number, and you can see here. My unit of measure came as hours, and now I want to give a labor rate. So I'll be giving my labor rate. Also, I'll be setting quantity order, which means the purchase quantity as one. Since I am having this labor, since I am purchasing labor for only one number and there is one thing you need to check when you're adding this non-stop item that is your non-stop bearing account specifically you need to check this before you post the purchase order because this non-stop bearing account is coming from your accounting set what you have created for this item and attached to the item so that's why I said this accounting set and setting the basic data properly is so, so important when you are tracking, when you're doing any transactions using the item, the application. If you have defined, if you have given whatever the necessary information into your system, you can finally post this to this order. And you will be getting a purchase order number. Then you will be going for the receipt entry. Receipt entry in the search. This is the place where you receive your stock, receive your goods, what you have ordered from your vendor. Imagine that you have received your ordered goods. So this was my purchase order number. So what I do is in my GR entry, I'll be feeding my purchase order number, what I have recently created. And once you give my you give your purchase order number in this PU number line, if you put the chart, it will automatically fetch whatever the information which you have given in your purchase order entry. And in here you can see. You have the unit cost what you have recently given in your purchase order line. And you can see your non-stop uh, clearing account as well as you can see quantity received as zero. So this is, means that still you have not received the ordered goods to your stock. And if you click this receive all button, what will happen is the system will automatically receive these ordered quantities in full mode, which means if you want to partially order, partially receive the ordered quantity, you will require to manually feed it in here. Else, if you are fully receiving these items, you can click on these receive words. The system will automatically change the quantity received value from zero to one. Since I have ordered one labor hour, so my line was got changed to one and my order line got completed. So then the next option is to pause this GRN. Once you pause this GRN, stocks and whatever the inventory control module you throw, uh, transactions to subledger uh, to uh, through the inventory control module and then 
you will be raising an invoice for the audit given. And so I have fully received my audit goods. This is the point that you can raise for invoice for the bank. So I'll be giving my voice number and link for this receipt number. I will be giving my GRM number what I have. Received where I have received my point page. So one side tab it will automatically fetch whatever the ordered goods, whatever the received goods, and it will create the invoice and I can check before I post it my unit cost and I can check my last operating account information. And once I post it, system will throws this invoice from operational module to the software module. And before you check on your subdivision module, you can go to this inventory control module, and there is a function at call IC period processing. Inside that, there is a sub function called day and processing. So what this day and processing do is it will throw whatever the item related to the transactions to inventory control module to the sub -ledgers. So since I have received my stock, since I have created my invoice, I'll be processing this day and processing just to re uh, understand and just to cross, uh, verify that whatever the operational module related transaction has been properly pushed to my ledger module. This is not a mandatory functionality. This will automatically throws the information, throws the transactions from sub from operational module to the sub -ledger, but this is just a process. This is just to ensure that whatever the transaction has been properly pushed. So, it says the end process completed, and before I go to the sub ledger, I want to check on my stock movement reports whether it had an, any impact from these non stock clearing cards. So, when you are checking your stock movement reports, there are two important reports where you can track these ICE inventory uh, control related transactions. One is inventory movement report and other one is stock transaction report. There is there are some other valuable reports such as item valuation and each inventory as well. But with inventory movement and stock transactions reports are tracking almost all information, almost all transactions which is related to the item. Is item. First of all, I'll be going to my inventory movement report. And I'll be defining my Transaction date range as like this, and then I'm selecting my transaction item that is label. And then let's see if I use any results from this month's stock. It says zero, which means whatever the non stock item related transaction has been properly pushed, but system has uh, IZ module has not tracked any information relates to non stock items. So, which means it's not is successfully pushing these non stock related transactions to the sub ledgers without tracking it from the inventory control over triples. If we go to the other 
stock report. Give this. This is the IC stock transaction report, and I'll be specifying number. In here, and let's see whether it gives any kind of information related to this transaction. Zero. So, system has given a report with zero results. It has all the receipts, so we have done the receipts part, but we have not done anything related to sales. That's not a problem. We have done it on, during this period, so quantity on hand zero, which means system has not tracked any transaction related to this number. Right. So we are through from the stock. We are through from the event control module. Now we are checking how this has been impacted how, what kind of impact this has given on my stock return model. So I have created an invoice. And you can see in my in the bottom, you can see there is a from, uh, there is a batch called PO generated batch. Let's see what it gives. So you can see here, this is my vendor number. And this is my invoice number, and this is my PO number, what I have just created. And if you want to cost check, you can drill down a transaction, and it will or, uh, goes to the PO invoice entry window. And you can cross check your amounts, your subdivision amounts, before you post it to the GM. So you can see here, once I posted my AP invoice entry, this has been posted to the GL. This has been created on my GL module. And let's see how it impacts on creditors and payable clearing accounts once you post it from AP module to the GL. And in the GL batches, we can check on the respective double entries, which is relates to these invoices. Let's go to the GL module. In my GL batch list, and you can see uh, Batch, this was my sub related batch information you can see here. And if I drill down my transaction, it will go to my AP invoice screen and it will give almost all information in here. And it has been, it is going to impact on my accounts payable trade, which is known as the credit control account. And these are my payable clearing accounts. And you can see how this amount has been distributed among these accounts. We have tax portion in here. And also this is my receipt transaction. And you can see here double entry, which is relates to these non-stock item receivings, and you can see how it impacts on my non-stock clearing account and my account's payment clearing account. So once you post these batches from GL, that will impact on your account balances as well. And that is one way you can create and you can purchase these non-stock items by using your inventory control module. And let's see how you can purchase 
is non-stop cry dancing without using inventory control module. So let's say there could be any reasons where users want to, you know, uh, create or purchase these non-stop items without even creating a non-stop item without having any kind of record in your item master. And then you can directly go to the purchase order entry and in your purchase order module. You have the purchase order transaction window, uh, purchase order transaction sub module, and there yeah, you have a purchase order entry window. And I'll be creating a new PU. And as I've done previously, I'll be selecting my vendor. And in here, I'll be checking my PU dates and arrival dates. And I'll be checking my that's related informations. Yeah, now I have defined my purchase order header information. And in here, now I'll be giving a different non-stock item. Let's say rental or something, if you are purchasing, or let's say a maintenance stuff. So I'll be putting my item number as maintenance, but may just to inform you that system doesn't have anything, any item as any item as maintenance. So I'll be giving my item number as maintenance. And system is yet to realize that whether there is an item called maintenance, no. And then system will give you a warning call, item maintenance does not exist, but still we can we can go forward. And in here, you can see my unit cost and your quantity order option. And then I'll be giving my unit cost is non stock item. And in here, since I am not maintaining a non stock item for this, this item in my item in my unit control model, I'll be selecting my expense and all. So this will be uh, giving an expense. This will be identifying as an expense. So therefore, I'll be selecting my expense account from my operational module. So this is so important. You require to have the GL account related permissions to select this item, this, select this GL account and change this GL account. And then system will realize that this is a non-stock item called maintenance and it should yeah, cost should go this as an expense to this account. So I have given my item number and I have given my unit cost and my unit of measure by quantity order. And unit of measure will be not coming since I am not maintaining, since I'm not maintaining in my inventory control module. So I can directly post it. So it's so easy. Uh, you will be getting a purchase order number once you post it. And then like we did previous, we can go to the GRM window and receive it by using the normal purchase order process. So we will be going to the GRM window as we can say the receipt entry window. I'll be creating a new receipt and I'll be feeding my purchase order number what I have just created. And I'll be putting a tab and then it will be automatically fetching whatever the your related information from my purchase order entry window. And I'll be cross checking my unit first and my expense account with my purchase order related information. And I'll be clicking on this button called receive all and then that will automatically receive whatever the good items, ordered items, whatever the goods and system will change the item line into completed state, which means you have already received whatever the goods, whatever the ordered goods within this GRN entry, and then I'll be posting it. And then you will be receiving a GRN number. 
you can create this invoice using your GRN number. Once you put tab, system will automatically fetch whatever the information from the GRN entry window, and it will be automatically changing your invoice, quantity invoice to one. And then I'll be checking my expense account. And I will be cross checking my invoice total amounts, my taxes, my totals. And then I'll be posting this invoice. Still completed. Then I'll be cross checking just to just to ensure that it has passed through my inventory control module. I'll be putting this late processing log, but this may, this is not a mandatory task, but just to ensure that whatever the information has been thrown properly through the control model. So, and then I want to check how, whether it's had any, any impact on my inventory control model from this process or entry. So, I can't put any item range in here because system does not realize anything for maintenance in your item master. So I don't have to put anything, but in here, what I do is just since I want to track this information, I'll be just putting my date range. Let's see whether it gives you any kind of result. System will give item related information, but nothing for the following day. And you can see anything called let's see whether it's giving any result. No. System has not given any results. Which means system has not tracked any transaction related to this master pattern. And let's check on my stocks transaction reports too. And this will give almost all items, but let's see whether it's giving any kind of results related to. And these are item numbers. And as you can see here, so I can't see anything relates to my nice, two nice stock items, either label or the maintenance. So, this is just a cross check. Zero transaction, zero results. Zero results. So, which means system has automatically passed whatever the non-stop period of transaction is from inventory control module through inventory control module to the sub-ledger module without making any impact on the stocks. So now we are through from my other uh, inventory control module and now we are checking what kind of impact it made in our sub -ledger. And you can see my video related batch, uh, batch information with my invoice information. This is the place where I have created my invoice in the just order module. Then you can see this was the expense account what I have created. So system is not having anything related to the clearing account since I have not maintained this non-stock item through the control module. So since it's and then it's identified this as an expert. So you can see your invoice related information, your document dates and your document totals. And you can see your taxes. 
and then post it. And let's see how it impacts on your creditor and payable clearing, how it impacts on your creditor and your expense account. Once you post it from AP that's from AP module to the GL module. And then you can go to GL batch list. And you can check. With the respective level entries. And if you be identifying it as a expense account, you be identifying it as expense and just throw only invoice entry without using P or using entry. So you can see how the debit credit amount has passed. And you can see the dates and you see drill down and see. Impact, what kind of impact made from the inverse entry? And that's how you can purchase this North Star Crypt using inventory control module as well as trans through a transaction entry window. And I hope you learn something and i hope you will you will make sure that you'll be using these functionalities effectively on your system if you want more information more queries about these non stock purchases you can visit our website as well as our youtube channel and we will be uploading whatever the webinar sessions what we are we have done to our channel and you can get the required knowledge from there as well. And after this webinar session, we will be uh, giving our webinar we, uh, videos uh, and we will be sharing our webinar videos through our chat as well. So that's it for the day. And you can raise whatever the questions you have right now. Else, you can write to us, and our mail address is csu at cdm.com. And thanks for attending to this session and uh, have a good day. And I open uh, for all the questions and you can raise it right now. So you can still write to us. If you have more concerns about these non-stop transactions, non-stop related purchasing, and we will be doing another uh, during another webinar session. We'll be doing how to do sales using these non-stop items. So that's it for the day, and thanks for the participation. Thanks for participating in this webinar session, and I hope you learned something. And have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>